uh, from. Uh, this is um, uh, yet another of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya webinars where we are discussing various issues that affect our sport, uh, both locally and internationally. Um, today we have a very, very um, hot topic, I must say, um, which is uh, about uh, doping um, and how to run clean, how to avoid uh, the pitfalls that uh, some of the athletes uh, globally find themselves in. And um, uh, we have uh, several distinguished uh, guests uh, today. Um, first of all, we have uh, uh, the chief Dimishon, the head of the Kenyan delegation to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which of course um, has now been pushed to next year, Mr. Waidaka Kioni. Uh, who is also the president of the Kenya Volleyball Federation. We also have uh, the CEO of the Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya, ADAC, uh, Mr. Jaftar Boot. Um, we have uh, the head of uh, um, you know, education um, at ADAC, uh, that is um, Agnes Mandu. Um, we also have our very own uh, world beaters, uh, uh, 2013 world champion in the steeplechase, uh, Milka Chemos, who is wearing a different hat as an athlete's rep, both at the Athletics Kenya and um, uh, World Athletics. And of course, uh, the new kid on the block, I must say, the latest sensation we have on the road and on the track, uh, Ronex uh, Kiputo, who is the world record holder in the 5K on the road, the 10K on the road, all the bronze medalists at the World Championships. And um, so many accolades, uh, we'll come to that uh, much later. Uh, but just to kick it off, uh, Mr. Kioni, um, you are the chef de mission of Team Kenya to the Olympic Games that is uh, supposed to, was supposed to be held in Tokyo, but now pushed to next year. And um, in every Olympic cycle, we have, um, you know, scandals coming up around Team Kenya, uh, around the doping issue. Remember last time when we were going to Rio for the Rio Olympics in 2016, there was the issue of um, the team manager of the athletics team who was said, who was said to have uh, leaked some information uh, to athletes before testing of these athletes. Then we had the case again of one of the officials uh, at the Kenyan camp in the Olympics was, uh, you know, flagged for using uh, somebody else's accreditation. And it was, you know, all these things are linked to doping. As the head of Team Kenya to Tokyo, what have you done differently to make sure that Kenya, you know, gets into the Olympics clean? Everything is, uh, you know, clean. All the athletes, uh, you know, both for track and field and uh, all the other disciplines, are adequately tested in the build-up to the Olympics, so that we don't have similar uh, scandals coming up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Makori, and the other panelists. Uh, thank you for having me in the panel today. It's a good question you have asked me. And uh, while I accepted to take the responsibility of being the CDM for Tokyo 2020, uh, one of the pledges I made was that I will do all that is doable to ensure that we have an Olympics that is scandal free in every aspect. The issue of doping has been one that has been creating out of worries in this country over the, over the years. And uh, I'm happy to report that uh, the National Olympic Committee of Kenya is working very closely with ADAC, and I'm happy that you're having Mr. Jasper Rugut on the panel, as well as Agnes Mandu, because these are the experts on the issue of uh, anti-doping. And you're also working very closely with the AK and the other federations. The National Olympic Committee of Kenya has said very clearly to all the federations, to all the team managers, to all the athletes, that we want to participate in the Tokyo Olympics without any scandals, any scandals whatsoever. So we Sorry, we, we seem to have uh, lost Mr. Kioni, but uh, as we try and uh, get him back, uh, Perhaps, uh, Mr. Rugut, again, uh, the CEO of the Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya, uh, that is a, a government uh, agency that was created in 2016 uh, to look into the issue of doping from the Anti-Doping Act of 2016. Um, definitely, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, really um, affected the whole process of doping. And I'm sure ADAC has been affected. 
what protocols do you have in place to make sure that uh, there is self-testing and that you indeed reach uh, the athletes so that they don't think that it's a, uh, you know, an opportunity for them to cheat, uh, assuming that there's no uh, testing going on? Yeah, thank you very much, Elias, and uh, all the other panelists. Um, it's a good opportunity to clarify a number of issues in this forum, particularly as pertains to the uh, doping issues uh, facing us, facing our country, and facing the entire uh, sporting spectrum in the world. Um, ADAC follows very closely the protocols that have been laid in place, put in place by the World Anti-Doping Agency. Uh, we are all conscious about the risks that are involved uh, as a result of the COVID-19, the coronavirus. And, and it is important to ensure that uh, all those who are involved are safe. That is the participants in terms of uh, the sample collection personnel and also the athletes themselves. WADA has continued to provide guidance on uh, the best way to do this, uh, protective equipment which we need to put, or that rather to employ to use gloves, for example, face masks, um, cleaning and disinfecting the service areas of the areas where uh, we are likely to uh, get into contact with any uh, contamination. All this is being observed to the letter. But more important also, um, there are notifications that we give to the athlete because uh, in these dangerous times, we don't want to force anybody to uh, a situation where he may or she may be exposed to risk. Uh, and so therefore also both the sample collection personnel and also the athletes, um, th there is a situation where we even inquire from them whether it is possible to have that sample taken. O although we know that uh, some of these tests that we are doing at this period are the out of competition ones, which, which essentially require no notice uh, initially. We try as much as possible to avoid uh, situations that can bring uh, the two parties into close contact. That is uh, the sample collection personnel and the athletes themselves. Situations like uh, for collection of blood where you cannot avoid physical contact, uh, for now we try as much as possible to avoid that. Although still, um, where it is necessary was the attack tests where, which have to be done at the particular time that it is called for. And that is when we call for the protective uh, steps that I've mentioned before the equipment that can be used to ensure that uh, risks are minimized. Uh, there are situations also where we get uh, results from the laboratory and uh, through the APMU, the Athlete uh, Passport Management Unit, they can recommend target testing at particular times, which cannot be avoided. And even if it is for blood, then we do it, but again with the precautions uh, that are, uh, have, have been outlined and uh, provided to us by WADA. But overall, we will continue doing tests so that uh, we don't open a situation where uh, it's like the athletes have an open window. They can use prohibited substances, knowing that we might not have a test uh, coming soon and uh, in the process uh, be uh, floating the regulations that are there in place. Uh, because as we know, um, the athletes could still use those substances benefit from the effects of the substances in their bodies and have them metabolized out of their systems within a certain period of time. And they do this if they know that there will not be any test uh, in a period uh, of a certain uh, number of days or weeks ahead. So all these things are put into consideration so that uh, we don't have uh, a situation where opportunities are open for irregular behavior, but at the same time, we also don't want to uh, make any risks uh, for both the sample collection personnel and the athletes themselves. So thank you. Could... Yeah, sorry to cut you. Uh, there are a lot of questions, but we will come back to you, especially on uh, there are some queries on the issue of ABP, the athletes' biological passport, and the whereabouts rule, uh, which are coming up. So perhaps we'll uh, revisit them shortly when we get back to you. Uh, let's move to Agnes. We're just taking the introductory remarks, then of course we'll uh, 
continue with the discussion. Agnes, of course, is the Director of uh, Research and Education at ADAC. And I must say, Agnes, uh, congratulations belatedly for, you know, of being appointed to the Education Committee of WADA. I think that shows the confidence that um, this uh, World Anti-Doping Agency has in Kenya. What are your thoughts yeah, about yes. uh, your testing program so far, the successes you've had, and the challenges in education and testing? I know you have a presentation, we'll, you'll put it on at some point, but just quickly take us through the challenges and successes. Okay, thank you, Elias. Thank you so much for even the appreciation. I, I must say that uh, uh, the, the NOC is doing a great job for being here, or rather for hosting what they are hosting today. Uh, it is a, a milestone for Kenya. Uh, well, um, I also want to first thank God for giving us this opportunity, because everything we do, we cannot make it without the the help of God. So I want to tell Kenya that I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior, and I trust every work I do even unto him because he's able to enable us to go the, the miles that are ahead of us. Otherwise, um, I can see the, 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 the successes that we've done in education is that uh, we are, we've been able to reach out to uh, almost, uh, we are close to 100,000 uh, people that includes uh, the ADRI support personnel, the ADRI themselves, and the, the children that um, we uh, take through the values based education. Uh, and uh, I believe without the, if the COVID 19 didn't catch up with us, we would uh, be clocking 100,000 uh, people. Uh, and uh, I think we've been able to reach out to many regions of this uh, nation. And therefore, for us, that is a success. And um, we want to even uh, appreciate the government for the, 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 the assistance, the facilitation through our CEO, because without that facilitation, we would not make it. So for us, that is a success because uh, we are using uh, government money to reach out to, to these people. And uh, that's a success for the government. Uh, therefore, uh, we've had uh, milestones for education. But on the other hand, we still have challenges. Uh, and uh, maybe the most glaring one is that uh, there are some areas we are not able to, to reach to because maybe they are very far and uh, issues of uh, security. Uh, there is uh, also a challenge of mobilizing the athletes. Uh, it's not an easy job to bring others together so that we have uh, the workshops. One is very expensive, and also uh, getting the right, uh, the, uh, the people we are looking for, especially from the grassroots, it's not very easy to bring them together so that they can listen to what we are saying. But we have tried our best to reach to those who are able to get to us, and uh, we thank God for that. Um, that's uh, the, another challenge could be language barrier in some areas. There are areas we get to and you even uh, using Kiswahili may not work. And uh, that's why uh, through the help of our CEO, we have educators who are coming from all regions so that when we need some help for uh, in, in languages, sometimes we can bring that person who can speak that local uh, dialect to them and uh, that way we are able to reach out to most of our, our others. Otherwise, uh, uh, we don't want to mention uh, so many challenges in this uh, uh, forum because uh, uh, we look at the, the best part of it. And that way, when you look at the best part of it, uh, you are able to move forward because challenges, they can discourage. But uh, we want to look at the best part of what we have already done. So that's what we've done uh, earlier. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, you, you talk about uh, the issue of language, which is very interesting because even in modern society with the technology we have, uh, the other day we had a, a problem with the Google Translate, mistranslating what an athlete from Ukraine said. I mean, she said she's happy to be in a turn. The people are friendly, but uh, Google Translate got it uh, totally wrong and out of context. So we understand uh, what you mean. I don't know if we have Mr. Kioni back. Um, if it's not back, then uh, 
we move on to um, our young man, uh, Ronex Kipruto. Uh, so many titles, world record in the 5K, 13, 18 uh, on the road, uh, world record 10K on the road, 26, 24. And again on the track, a bronze medal at the world championships, world junior champion under 20 in Finland, 2018. Ronex, these things are too many. How do you keep yourself you know, away from using uh, banned substances and focusing on your career, especially because, you know, these days, uh, there's a lot of pressure for athletes to move from the track to the road where there is more money. How are you keeping yourself uh, focused and away from, uh, from drugs, uh, Ronex? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Elias Makur, for, for this forum. First, I want to thank, thank you for giving me in that to this forum. When it comes to those things you have mentioned there, I'm keeping myself safe as I stay with my coaches here at St. Patrick's Committee, where they, they teach me a lot of things. They, they teach me as, a, they, they mold me, they teach me as my parents. Then, secondly, what I have, Manage so that I, I have, I am where now is that those coaches have helped me a lot by educating me, giving me everything I need there. And secondly, is that they, for me, they update for updating whereabouts, avoiding where being careful in whatever you take and eating food which are not good. Yeah, thanks, Ronex. We will come back to you. I know you, you're working with Brother Colm or Cornell in Iten, who is a very strict uh, person. So I, I'm sure that uh, he has brought you up well. I see Mr. Kion is back, but before I get back to him, Milka, um, Karibu. Milka Chemos, uh, 2013 Moscow, uh, gold medal in the steeplechase. I remember that amazing race at the Luzhniki Stadium. Um, and of course, uh, you could have won more medals before on the track, but they were taken away from you, only to be given back uh, after the Russian Yulia Zaripova was uh, banned for doping. How, as an athlete, do you feel about uh, you know, competing against other athletes who are using uh, performance-enhancing substances? And how, what advice do you have as an athlete's rep the juniors like Ronex coming up. Thank you so much, Elias. Um, I think uh, if you have never been an athlete and you have never run with uh, someone who has used drugs, you'll never feel the pain that I felt for like seven years. It is so much painful. Imagine um, running with someone who is using the drugs for more than like four years and uh, you are being given the medal after seven years. It is like something athletes should learn that uh, nothing in this world is, is for free. So um, running with uh, someone who has uh, dog is not easy and it is so much painful. Imagine training for that long, knowing that uh, you are fit enough to go and, uh, and win. And reaching there, someone just comes like an automatic. Have you ever drive a car which is automatic and manual? You see, there is a difference. <laughs> so I think it is not fair and it is not good for for our, our for our athletes to use these drugs at the end of it you'll be good and uh, you it is not only your name that uh, that you're bringing your name down it is also the name of the country so i think as young athletes someone like ronex you should at least you should learn to understand that life is not the way you take it to be. So you, it is not only you, it is 
your parents, your friends, and uh, the whole country is looking at you. So at least we should tell our athletes to run clean and they should win, right? Because someone like me, Saripova took it like seven good years. So at the end of it, I got what God had planned for me. So uh, the only advice I can give to our athletes is let them run clean. And uh, even the Bible itself, it gives you, we have uh, so many verses that in Akwanyesha, in Afau, Ufatilie Vitumzuri. So the only advice I can give them is uh, please let us run clean and whatever whatever you do, do it in a good uh, in a good way. Now uh, also coaches, your coaches let them be like your parents. Hear what your coaches are telling you. Hear what your coaches are telling you. I don't think if there is any coach who can tell an athlete that let's use this and this and this. But even you yourself know that your body itself, something that it is not, it is not good in your body. At the end of it, it will come to affect you. Thank you, Milka. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, we'll come back to you. Uh, indeed, uh, the Bible is again is doping. I'm sure we can get those verses, uh, also the Quran and religion in general, it's not a, a good thing to do. Sorry, Mr. Kioni, we, we lost you, but uh, perhaps you could continue from where you are on the preparations for the Tokyo 2020, now 21 Olympics. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elias Makori. I'm having a problem with the network, but I hope we'll be able to finish um, the statement. Uh, as I was saying, uh, NOC is working very closely with the Ministry of Sports, very closely with the ADAC, very closely with the AK and all the other federations, with the aim of ensuring that our participation at the Tokyo 2020 Games is free of any doping incidents. We are consulting regularly with the ADAC, we are consulting regularly with AK, we are consulting regularly with those other federations which are vulnerable to the menace of doping. And uh, we, we remain hopeful that uh, the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo will be free of any doping incidents. I'm also aware that uh, the ministry is uh, planning or taking action to ensure that those who are caught doping will be treated as criminals and they could also face charges in court and be jailed. We want to run clean because Kenya has a lot of talented athletes who can run clean and win clean. But when you indulge in doping, you mess up the reputation of our own sportsmen and sportswomen, and you also adversely impact on the reputation and image of our country. So we will leave no stone unturned in our effort to ensure that we have Tokyo 2021 free of any doping. Thank you. Thank you for that very, very, very strong uh, statement. And indeed, we need to get rid of doping as we head towards uh, the Tokyo Olympics. And uh, going back to Mr. Rugut, there are actually quite a number of questions coming through because like you said, it's a very hot topic. And none other than uh, former world champion in the javelin, Julia Ziego has uh, thrown in a question. Um, he's asking, uh, can ADAC be firm and put measures in place uh, that should an athlete be caught doping, they are banned for good? Mr. Kionia just mentioned about uh, the possibility of a jail term. And uh, just recently, the president of AK, um, General Retired uh, Tuwei, said that they are exploring ways of even withdrawing passports from athletes who are caught doping. Uh, how would you respond to um, the concerns raised by Julia Ziego? and indeed by many other people. Uh, thank you, Elias. Uh, let me uh, clarify that uh, the Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya um, operates on a written law. That is the Anti-Doping Act number five of 2016. Uh, and we follow the provisions of that law uh, as prescribed. 
Um, let's also clarify that uh, the Anti-Doping Act is a negotiated document, negotiated between us as a country, as uh, Kenya, um, based on um, our being signatories to the UNESCO Convention against doping in sports, and also the World Anti-Doping Code as uh, set out by the World Athletic, I mean, World Anti-Doping uh, Agency. So all these, all these documents which I referred to are valid in as far as uh, the sanctions uh, that we use are uh, concerned. Uh, therefore, for us, we will follow what the court says. We will not uh, depart from the World Anti-Doping Code because uh, as signatories, we need to uh, abide by what the court says. So if it is a sanction for two years for uh, an infringement of a certain um, rule of a certain you know, use of a certain substance or use of a certain method, that is what we shall uh, uh, give. And in any case, the results management bit of uh, the anti-doping process in, in Kenya is uh, done by the sports disputes type in. And the prosecution also follows the outlines and uh, the recommendations as set out by the world and the token. So it's slightly more complicated than that. However, uh, let me on, uh, on a positive note indicate that uh, we're in the process of making amendments to the Anti-Doping uh, Act. Because as we are aware, we have a new code coming into place um, in 2021, January. We need to realign our act so that, uh, you know, the details of that uh, are in, in, in consonance with our act. And therefore, when we come to uh, the public participation bit, when we are going to the stakeholders to find out uh, what are their views, you know, these are now the views which we can marry, which we can uh, take on board. Uh, so that again we can still uh, run it through uh, WADA to find out what else can we put in place. As I've said in 2015-2016, as we prepared the World and I mean the, the Anti-Doping Act of Kenya and the rules which came thereafter, we did a lot of consultation with WADA, and so therefore we cannot depart from that without revisiting uh, those details. And, and this is going to come. We have done uh, draft number one of uh, the amendments. We have run it through to WADA. We are waiting for their feedback. And, and when it comes to that point, we will still go for public participation where we will uh, listen now to these uh, views. It is true, uh, the feeling generally is that perhaps sanctioning an athlete, just sanctions two years, four years, but that is now how it is prescribed by the court. We feel that sometimes in our situation, we may need more tough uh, measures, uh, stricter measures, but then that will only come if it has gone through the process of uh, enactment into law through the amendments I've uh, mentioned. Thank you, Mr. Rubut. Uh, Agnes, we are coming to you. Perhaps you can pre prepare the presentation you have because some of the questions uh, that I'm seeing probably will be answered in your presentation. But as, as you prepare, Mr. Rubot, there's a, another follow-up question uh, again from Julia Ziego. Um, why does ADAC wait until the last minute so they have to do the three mandatory tests? Um, why can't you do the tests early enough? Remember the, the case of the, uh, the Doha World Championships where Simiu, Simiu one of the athletes, uh, you know, could not travel because he had not gone through the mandatory tests. Why do you leave it too late? Uh, Julia Sorry, your mic. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, let me repeat that we, we act on uh, the list that is given to us by the Federation. In the case of uh, the Doha uh, Championships, the, the World Athletics Championships in Doha last year, we kept on cutting. Uh, revised lists from the athletic schedule. We do the test for the, the, the probables they have given us as early as uh, February. By April, other new people have qualified. And yet the, re the requirements for that, we start the test 10 months before the championships. 10 months before September would have been November, December of 2018. 
uh, and we did start those tests that early. However, the final list for Doha was given to us much later, as late as uh, end of June. Sometimes I think a few names came in in uh, July. The same thing happened for um, the Africa Championships in Morocco, because we kept on getting uh, lists again revised up to one month before the champion. So for us, as soon as we get the, the list of probables, we will conduct the test as required. I want to clarify that uh, the, the protocols in place are said that when you are doing those tests, you have to space them at least a minimum of three weeks between one sample collection and the next one. We are in category A in athletics in, uh, in Kenya whereby um, AIU, World, Ath World Athletics, has given as a condition that you must do at least four tests. When you space four tests um, with at least three weeks in between, you can see how long that period uh, is likely to be uh, before you complete the four tests for one individual. So the earlier we get the test, I mean, the, the name of probables, better. but sometimes, Qualifications come in through other events which may have happened elsewhere outside this country, not the trials which were done here. And even by the time that we do the trials here and select the team Kenya for, for those championships, it may be too late for ADAC uh, to do the mandatory four tests for uh, a country which is in category A, as Kenya is. Thank you, Rugut. Uh, you know, the questions are supposed to come at the end of the session. But when a world champion asks a question, a burning question, surely you cannot, uh, you cannot, maybe it's going for training later. So we'll be mixing. If a hot question comes in, we throw it in. So Hello. over to you, Agnes, uh, with the presentation. Um, and as you prepare, there's another question about uh, how you select uh, the people who are testing, but that's, you can answer that later. Kindly go ahead with the presentation. Okay, uh, yes, I'm sharing. Just uh, one minute, yes. Uh, I hope you can see it, Elias. Yeah, yeah, we can see it, the overview, yeah. Okay, so I'm um, just doing the overview and uh, my presentation is uh, to be very short because uh, we are not going to, 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 into details. We, ju we just want to give an overview of what we do. And uh, this is all about uh, education. Uh, so, uh, first, we want to say that uh, the agency, as our CEO has said, was established in the year 2016 through an act of parliament. And uh, that's where now the agency got the mandate to do the work that we do. Uh, we, as the agency, we are coordinated by WADA, and uh, we are affiliated to Africa Zone 5, RADO, as well as. Uh, the uh, we are funded fully by the government and uh, that's uh, how our facilitation come through. And uh, to do the technical work, we, we established two uh, technical departments while we were, we, were, we were developing the structures for the agency. And that is the education and research and we have uh, compliance, standard and compliance for testing. Uh, education, it, we base it on code article 18, because whatever we do, we have to be guided by the code as our CEO said. And uh, the purpose for the education basically is to, to, to prevent uh, doping. And that's when we, we use the value-based education, that's for pre prevention. But we also do information sharing, which is meant for deterrence. Uh, information sharing is for people who are already uh, competing and uh, maybe they understand the issues of doping. So we want to tell them, to give them the information that can make them deter from, 
from, from doping. And this we do through what we call values-based education, which as I said is for the children uh, that's uh, in uh, below 14 years. We work with those children and the purpose is just to instill the spirit of sport values into them. So that when they are growing, when they are growing up, they can uh, grow with the integrity of knowing that uh, you don't have to compete to win. If you compete, you compete clean, it's worth it and uh, you don't have to win at all the time, at all costs. Uh, workshops and outreach programs, we use them for uh, the athletes that are already in competition, the elite and the, every other level. And uh, we also uh, target uh, our athlete support personnel because they work with the athletes and they are able to influence the athletes. And we don't leave out the public because uh, uh, we realize that uh, public is a big influence to the to the adults. Adults don't compete in uh, in vacuum. They work with their brothers, their sisters, their parents. They can influence them, and therefore we want to reach everybody and tell them about the the issues of why the adults should not do. Uh, while we are doing our education and also the testing, we rely mostly also on research, which are. Uh, we have a, a, a section with the agency and that research is able to guide us in which areas we should concentrate more, like which federations should we target more in education or, or testing, depending on the results that are uh, uh, this, or gotten from the, the research. Uh, the key information that we deliver to these different groups, uh, as I said, young and upcoming athletes, we do the spirit of sports values, which are meant to prevent. And uh, we, that one we use uh, mostly uh, skits and uh, sports uh, games uh, where the children are subjected to the, some uh, sports, sporting activity and then uh, they learn some values from the, whatever they have been uh, doing. And uh, that the, the activities that we do don't just basically uh, look at sports. We also we want to want the children, even when they are the, at their homes, how, they, how do they behave when they are with their parents? If a child is honest uh, with the parents, they will be honest even in sports. So we are encouraging the, the positive values to the children that are growing up. For other levels of uh, adults, as I said, we make, uh, we give them information, and uh, at a point, the information uh, we we are, we, are, we are focusing for that information changing to become education. It becomes education when an athlete or a, an, a, a support personnel is able to use the information we have given to them and give them give it to another person. That means they have understood the areas and they are able to pass it over. So that's the time we call it education. And uh, this uh, education and information sharing is meant to assist our athletes and the support personnel to make informed decisions that they will not say, we didn't know, I did this because I didn't know. That we are giving them uh, information for them to understand what they should do and what they should not do. And uh, for other support personnel, we also emphasize on their roles and responsibilities in the fight against doping in sport because uh, they can also be caught up uh, with the anti-doping rule violations. So we want them to know what they should do and what they should not do. For the public, as I said, it's a circle of influence for others and therefore we want to create awareness to all of them so that they can uh, influence the others positively. Uh, the, there are documents that have come or we are given by the World Anti-Doping Agency that we use while we are doing our work. We don't rely on our own information. We get it from the, the, the documents that have been approved by WADA. And the main uh, document is the World Anti-Doping Code where we are guided on how to carry out education and other activities <laughs> that are touching on the fight against doping in sports. Um, before uh, we were having six uh, of these documents and the seventh one being the code. The, uh, the first one was uh, 
uh, we call them the standard, the international standards that work together with the code. And the first one is testing, testing and investigation. That one is guides the Department of Testing on how to carry out their, their tests, who to target, how to, 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 to calculate the percentages of the federations, the numbers that should be targeted, to be tested. The laboratories, we know that they are just for analysis, but uh, we don't take our, our, our samples to any, just any other laboratory. It has to be one accredited or one approved. Uh, we also have a, a standard on uh, therapeutic use exemptions. And this one, it, it is assists us to know uh, which athletes should be exempted to take the prohibited substances because of genuine medical conditions. Uh, we hope also have a standard called prohibited list. Uh, this is a list of uh, prohibited substances and uh, it's revised every one, one, once a year. It comes into effect every 1st of January. And uh, we always encourage the athletes and the support personnel to download this list and use it on their mobile phones so that uh, wherever they are, if they are going to a doctor, they are able to present that list so that uh, uh, they, they are, the, the doctor can know what they should pr prescribe and what they cannot. Code compliance by signatories. This is for federations and uh, other, uh, other, other signatories. And it also guides uh, the, the signatories on what they should do, their roles and their responsibilities in the fight against doping in sport. This is uh, an, a standard that uh, came into effect not uh, long ago but it's already approved that it's in use. There is also the standard on uh, protection of privacy and personal information. This one helps us to keep the information that we acquire from the athletes confidential until that point when we are supposed to announce if there's a sanction, there's a point when we are supposed to, 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 to declare to the public that so-and-so has been sanctioned. But before then, every other information is kept confidential. We have two upcoming uh, international standards, which will be in effect, in, will, be, will come into effect in the, the year 2021. And that's the international standard for education and the international standard for resource management. Therefore, as we uh, move forward with education, we will now be guided by the international standard for education, which was not there before but uh, now it will be guiding us on what to do. And we, are, uh, we, we thank God that uh, that standard uh, that was developed for education, uh, it's like uh, they used Kenya to develop it. So there's nothing much we are going to change in our way of uh, education or carrying out the education activities because it's just stipulating what we have been doing. So we are, we are grateful that uh, uh, we will not uh, be struggling to implement it. There is also a standard for uh, resource management, which is also coming to effect in the year 2021. And that one will be guiding the people that are carrying out the prosecutions and uh, managing the cases of sanctions in the area of anti-doping rule violations. Uh, well, from there, we will look at um, the anti-doping rule violations, the violations that an athlete can commit or athlete support personnel. I'll just mention them. I'll not go into details because there are many. Uh, at first, they used to be 10. Now, they are 11. Uh, 11 will be in effect uh, by 1st of January. But for now, we, still, we are still operating with the 10. And the first one is usually the presence. Presence means that uh, the adult has been tested and they have been found to be, to have uh, doped. That is, they have taken the prohibited substances and uh, it has its own sanction. And mostly it's usually four years, depending uh, on how the case is argued and depending on how innocent the, the, the adult is. They, it can be reduced depending on how the athlete was uh, got to, 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 to have that presence in their bodies. Uh, use or attempted use is when we get information that somebody is trying to use or they are having those uh, the, 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 the prohibited substances they are attempting to use, or 
where ABP, Adri's biological passport has been taken and uh, it is showing uh, irregularities in the blood. So that can lead to use or attempted use, even without having testing that Adri's for that particular substance. Uh, the that one is uh, evading, reducing, or failing to, to submit a sample. And that one, um, uh, we usually give a, a, uh, an example of our our champion in uh, was it cross country uh, John Koki. His was a review so, and that's a, a good example of uh, this area uh, where the testing officers or doping control officers went to his place in Yagururu. They asked for the this urine sample, and uh, he sent them to DOD to get permission from the bosses. So they went back and they gave a report that uh, John Gogi has refused to give the sample and therefore he got the sanction. And maybe uh, John Gogi was uh, clean, but uh, that gave him a sanction because of, um, I'm assuming by that time, John didn't have the information that the refusal was, uh, can lead him to a sanction. So it's very serious to evade or to refuse. Evading is when you hear the, the others, the, 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 the they are notified and then they they run away from uh, the, the doping control process. They are they have been notified, but uh, they, they they run away from uh, providing the sample and therefore it will become the severity. Missed tests and they are finding failures. They are related to the whereabouts where we have addressed in the registered testing school. This is specifically for those who are in registered testing pool and it's a wide topic. Therefore, I may not say much about it here because uh, there is a mistest when somebody comes to, to test an athlete, it's usually out of competition testing and uh, they are testing wherever they are. And um, they, they are supposed to have uh, to have uh, given their whereabouts uh, online or through Adams to say where they will be at a particular one hour in the day. And when you get there, you miss them in that one hour, 60 minutes slot. If you miss them, that's a mistake. If they don't update their whereabouts on uh, online, again, that's a, fa a fighting failure. If you, they get three combined uh, in a year, 12 months, then that's a, a missed test or, and it will be a sanction. I mean, it will be counted as a sanction. Uh, missed tests, you can have two and just two, one fight, fight, uh, fighting failure, they will give you three. So if you do that within 12 months, then you are ramp for a sanction. Uh, the, the, the next one is tampering or attempted tampering where this one comes in uh, where uh, an athlete maybe has already given a sample, but uh, they want to interfere with that sample or a coach is uh, stopping an athlete from giving a sample. That is tampering. Or an athlete is interfering with the, with the, with the uh, containers and the bottles that uh, are supposed to carry the sample. So that tampering may come in many ways and uh, we will not look at all the ways because there are many. Uh, possession, uh, it's uh, an ADRV where if you are found with, with uh, a prohibited substance, let's say EPO, an athlete is having an EPO with uh, themselves, whether they are taking it or not, it's a possession and it's a serious uh, anti-doping rule violation. You get the four years and here in Kenya, I think possession is also a criminal offense. So uh, having the, the substances and the methods, methods include things like uh, having uh, uh, syringes for in uh, anti-injections where you are not a doctor and you are keeping them. That's possession, and that can land you into a sanction. Uh, supplying uh, or trafficking or attempted trafficking are those who, who supply these uh, substances to Adrid for the purposes of them enhancing their performance. That also in Kenya is a criminal offense, and it can land you into jail uh, together with the sanction. <laughs> administration or attempted administration is uh, mostly practiced by the, 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 the support personnel or doctors or 
medical personnel with the athletes. When you are caught with administration, uh, you also get a sanction and uh, it's also a, a criminal offense in Kenya. Helping someone get away is called complicity. And uh, complicity is where you know an athlete is supposed to be tested, but uh, you inform them so that they run away from the venue or wherever they are so that they are, the, the doping control officers don't catch up with them. That is complicity and it will give you a sanction. The tenth one uh, is prohibited association. And uh, this one is where mostly for support personnel who have been sanctioned. If uh, an athlete is associating with a, with a support personnel who is sanctioned, they can also be sanctioned. So that's all, that, those are the 10. And the 11th one, the eleventh one, which is coming into effect in the in January 2021, is discouraging or retaliating against anyone that is trying to report uh, on uh, an anti-doping rule violation. So that will be added and it will come into effect next, uh, next year in, from January. Uh, there are consequences of doping. If you are doping, you know the, there will be consequences. And uh, these consequences, they touch in three major areas. And the first one, we call it health consequences. And in health, you have several uh, consequences that can come to you because of uh, uh, taking prohibited substances. Uh, beginning, maybe if, uh, starting with uh, spoiling your skin, uh, and uh, boldness that is losing your hair when you are very young, deepening of voice that is for mostly for women, uh, libido disorders will affect both sexes. Uh, they, that, they are those who get, uh, they start feeling nauseated, that can be on both. Uh, mood swings, this one in sports does not just uh, apply to women, but even men because of prohibited substances, you find men with the mood swings. And uh, you find a man that has grown breast because of those substances. There are very many uh, health consequences and they are very serious and they some lead to death. So uh, it's a very, when you, you are using prohibited substances and uh, we need to avoid them because when you start them and you are young, uh, you are growing with them and uh, you realize that uh, the, such people don't, uh, they will not live long. We, we saw uh, the other day there was a bodybuilder in Kericho who had used those substances and be passed on uh, because of those uh, Drugs. So it's very serious and it's real. Uh, the next uh, consequence touches on economic and uh, the consequences, uh, they range from uh, loss of sponsors uh, because uh, no one wants to associate with somebody who has been sanctioned, so they will withdraw their sponsorship from you. Then you lose your income because uh, you cannot continue now getting or rather the competing and getting the medals and being awarded for winning, you will not be allowed to compete. So you'll be losing your income. And for them that have already been awarded and uh, they are found uh, maybe 10 years later that they are took, uh, they come and uh, auction your property. So you, there's uh, a serious issue in that. Uh, also, when you're sanctioned, you, the previous achieve, achievements will also be wiped out because it will damage your, everything that uh, was positive in your life before. So uh, it damages your, your career, it will damage your future prospects. It, it is a serious thing and it will reduce you to nothing, even where you maybe aren't others very clean. So once you get sanctioned, then it spoils even the, the past, which may be how was clean. Uh, social consequences, uh, the, because of uh, being sanctioned, you, you damage relationships with your friends and family. And uh, there's, because of the prohibited association, you realize that uh, now you are separated, you are isolated from peers and sports. You cannot compete as, uh, as uh, freely as used to. Therefore, this may lead to emotional and psychological well-being. It will affect you as a person 
and that may lead you to other uh, negative effects. And uh, that was my overview because it was meant just for introduction. And I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agnes, for that uh, overview. Um, very interesting uh, presentation. You have very good presentation. And in fact, that's why uh, you are chosen to join the WADA Education Committee because that was brilliant. Um, as we move on, I see a question from uh, one of uh, the viewers, Emily, um, who is asking a very interesting question. You presented those documents, uh, those uh, very interesting uh, uh, bits and pieces of information. She is asking, can this, can the WADA code and indeed all other doc documents to do with anti-doping be translated into Kalijin, Swahili, TC, all the local languages? I can imagine. Um, you know, having a look at a uh, Kisi one, having a look at a Kisi, uh, something along the lines of Amariyo uh, Komenta Chinguru, you know, things that people will be able to read in the village and appreciate. Are you working on, on that, uh, those translations? Uh, thank you, Elia. Uh, yes, we are trying to a uh, lower level to translate a few of our documents, but uh, we've not reached to the level of the code. But uh, at the moment, we want to, to translate we call what we call a, a glance series. It has all the information, uh, which is the, the key information from the code. And therefore, when we translate that to Kiswahili, they will be able now, or to any other language, they will be able to understand the basic information that is picked from the code. A glance series is, uh, has information compiled from the code. So, uh, for translation, that's the, the level we are at, and uh, may, maybe in the future we may, we may try to translate the code. Uh, thanks a lot, Agnes. Uh, we are already on the hour mark. Uh, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of questions coming up. Milka, you've had uh, what Agnes has said about the education. I remember there's a time I was in Eldoret, and there was a seminar going around, uh, going on in one of the hotels uh, by Adak. Agnes was there, of course. And um, there are some top athletes, I won't mention them, but when they saw the Adak car, they took cover, they disappeared. They thought it was, uh, you know, whenever they see Adak, they think they're being looked for uh, to be busted for doping. What advice do you have for athletes uh, or in terms of relations with Adak and um, attending these conferences, reading uh, documents that uh, Agnes has uh, shown us? Okay, thank you, Elias. I think. Uh... Our athletes should, should understand that uh, these other people, they're still our family, and that the people who, who can teach us about the education, uh, about even our whereabouts, about everything in doping. So it is not good for athletes to, at least, uh, it's not good for, for them to fear. And I think if you see an athlete, maybe running away from, uh, from ADAC people. That athlete must have a question mark. And uh, ADAC, I encourage you, please look for that athlete who normally runs away from you. That's something like maybe, maybe there is something that uh, that athlete is hiding from, yeah. yeah in fact, uh, that's a very important point. They should not, because you know, athletes, Kenyan athletes are very fast. When they run away from ADAC, you can't catch them. You remember the case of an athlete jumping over a fence. Uh, you know, you cannot catch them. Ronex, kwa wale ambao pia wanasikiza kwa Kiswahili kule Dar es Salaam, kule Mitaani, unaweza ambiaje wanariadha wenzako? Kumbuka uwashe mic yako. Kuhusu hasa wakati huu wa COVID, utakuwa na zile temptation. Watu wakirudi kwa mashindano, labda wajafanya mazoezi ya kutosha waanze kutumia madawa ndio wafike ile level ya wanariadha wengine unaweza washauri vipi naona umekaa vizuri hapo social distancing sioni mtu karibu utawashauriaje athletes ile uh, atabie v time andelea ronex eh kwa wanariadha wenzangu na waimiza wafuate masharti na wasingatia yao masharti wa waendelee kutii masharti ya ADAC na Athletics Kenya na kuwe waaminifu kwa kasi yao Asa hapo iten mko wengi na kuna wengine ambao wanaona 
fulani amejenga nyumba kubwa fulani anapeleka gari kubwa au pia wanataka waone kama wamepata hizi pesa kwa haraka wewe mwenyewe ulianza vipi na umefikaje hii level bila kukimbilia tuseme umeona pesa unataka upeleke prado kama fulani hapo so what i imagine them is that they should be patient and they should work extra harder on their training and follow the rules and regulations of ADA and follow the rules of their coaches and work smart and train well so that when it comes to competition they are fit and they are well so that they can reach that top level of top athletes and they will be able to acquire what they they were looking for if they work genuinely and add up for for it uh, that's uh, very good and for yourself you how is your program now in terms of uh, uh, training in isolation there's no group training those fat leg sessions are not there the long runs with other uh, athletes how are you training in this period yeah, I, i personally as ronex i i talk with my coach through an sms or through a phone call he gives me a some so uh, he gives me part of training training programs and i i i do myself only i follow those rules i train personally because i have coaches who guides me thank you that's a very good uh, advice and information as we get back to mr kioni again um, there was a very um, well thought out and uh, strict deadline for you know a program for testing for Tokyo which was to begin on July 24th i mean that's the Tokyo Olympics now that the olympics have been pushed to 2021 uh, july again uh, how is the how are the timelines have you what have you changed mr mr kioni your mic uh, your mic is uh, your mic is not on can you hear me now yeah now you yeah, perfect okay. oh, very good the ioc has issued uh, fresh timelines and uh, the postponement in fact worked in our favor because we were we were at one point uh, fearing that we are running out of time but but uh, with a new date i believe, I believe we shall be able, able to achieve all the, the testing, testing in good time and in terms of uh, budget wise are you i'm told you are financially sound there's nothing to worry about for testing i, I think, think we are good, good. Uh, the, the ministry has, has been, been very supportive. supportive as i said earlier on In my, my last discussion with Jasper, Jasper he had reported to me that the ministry had given them less than funding and i believe that is the situation as of now uh, mr ruguta i think you're not complaining too much about money at this point um there are some questions uh, let me give you two quick questions uh, one from uh, uh, is uh, one of uh, the viewers here asking about how do you pick uh, the testers the, the testing officials um, at adac and secondly the issue of uh, supplements perhaps if you could uh, touch on those two supplements actually are very uh, they are a landmine uh, perhaps you will want to comment on these two issues um, maybe let me get the first question uh, the first question is uh, on how adac uh, uh, selects so points so employees uh, the testing officials yeah thank you uh, elias now the testing officials we as you are aware most of them are volunteers they are not uh, full time members of staff of adac uh, because it's not possible to have uh, all those people um, who are involved in sample collection in the adac payroll so we select them um on the basis of one their interest in these uh, activities um, most of them are people who have been involved in sports uh, previously some of them are people who have been uh, who have a background either in medical uh, so that it's normally easy to train them again 
Uh, but more more important to us uh, is the issue of integrity, because we, you know these are sensitive issues. Um, the conduct between the Sambo collection officers and the athletes. Normally, we need to uphold the highest standard of uh, integrity, uh, so that there, there is no doubt in the process, right from the Sambo collection uh, at the beginning up to the time the transmission. Uh, the chain of custody of the sample all the way up to the time when we transfer uh, that sample to the laboratory. So there are things which we look at, but then even after that, we take them through intense uh, training. We have uh, taken all our uh, uh, personnel, both the in-house employees of VADAC and the ones who are volunteers who, who join us from time to time to do specific duties. We have taken them through rigorous training we have a partnership with Antetoping Norway for the last three years. Uh, they have been the ones who have uh, trained our personnel. Uh, slightly before that, we have used uh, the RADO, the Regional Antetoping uh, Organization, that is Zone 5 in charge of uh, the Eastern African region. Um, again, they, they have uh, good trainers, they have trained our personnel. WADA itself has come in uh, quite uh, strongly, particularly in capacity building um, and, and uh, anti-doping uh, organization in South Africa, that is sites. Um, so these this personnel are trained well. We take them through a certification process. We also take them through recertification because from time to time they need to be uh, retrained and recertified so that uh, they adhere to the best uh, standards. As it was in, indicated by in the presentation by Agnes, you know we follow international standards, and and we want to ensure that uh, our personnel, whoever it is, both the in-house uh, uh, full-time staff of Vatag and those ones who work with us uh, from time to time, uh, adhere to the standards set internationally. So that that is why we need uh, training and retraining, certification and recertification. Um, so that that is the process. Then um, the second question. It was about uh, supplements. Uh. Yes, the second question on supplements. I want to say this. Supplements for now is still a very, very high risk uh, area uh, for everybody, not for only us, but for anybody else. Because uh, the issue is food supplements are quite unregulated. As much as you might see a package indicating a few um, things inside that uh, packet of food supplements, th there is no hard and firm rule as to how much information you indicate or you give in, in that package. So when we take a food supplement, you could be taking something which half of it is indicated, but there could be many other things which are there which are not in the in the package. It's a totally unregulated uh, industry and and particularly now when we are talking about uh, um, adulteration of certain substances into what we understand it could be just uh, something to boost your strength but there could be other things that are prohibited which are added there which are not indicated in the package and, and normally we just warn the athletes we we caution them as much as possible avoid food supplements because you, you have no guarantee that what is written on that package is what is contained inside uh, the the, um, the supplements themselves. Yes, thank you. Before you go to Agnes, uh, Ronex, I think that's a very important point. Like you, I'm sure Ugali, Skumawiki, Chapati Kidogo, that is enough to keep you going. You don't need supplements just to be on the safe side. How is your nutrition or discipline? How, which foods uh, do you, uh, for example, take? Yeah, when it comes to those things, because it depends on what athletes take. Because mine, I cannot take a, a, the same food as other athletes, because it, some food sometimes complies with other athletes. I may be, I may be a fan of taking Chocolo and Mursi. Another athlete may be a fan of taking other meals there. So it is different there. But me personally, I took what I normally, what is normally good, and it's good for my health, and that's enough for me. 
Indeed, uh, and then Kunya uh, was kabisa and keep on breaking those records. Uh, back to you before we get to Agnes, when I see you, there's the issue of uh, pharmacies and pharmacists and some doctors who are there to help in, uh, you know, dishing out these uh, uh, banned substances. Are you narrowing down on this in terms of arrests and prosecution or, uh, you know, through the other arms of government or what is being done to, you know, curtail such kind of uh, uh, issues? Yes. Um... The, uh, in the presentation, it was mentioned uh, the criminal sanctions which which come in. Mostly, these are for the athlete person. I mean, the support personnel, doctors, uh, physiotherapists, uh, and sometimes maybe even the clinical officers, whom who athletes visit from time to time, where maybe they administer prohibited substances knowingly or they stock these substances, or sometimes they peddle them, they transfer from one place to another uh, for use in illegal activities like uh, enhancing uh, performance. Now, Section 42.2 of uh, the Anti-Doping Act is clear on this. These are criminal, um, you know, there are criminal sanctions which can be meted on this. And uh, currently we have a number of uh, cases ongoing. I think there are about seven cases in various stages of either prosecution or investigation, uh, you know, directed towards uh, the support personnel, not the athletes this time, but people who have knowingly supported athletes to administer these prohibited substances. Um, I may just mention here that uh, currently we have um, an active intelligence and investigation unit uh, supported by officers from the Directorate of Criminal Investigation, and we have charged them uh, deliberately with this uh, task of finding out, making follow-ups. Uh, and let me mention, sometimes also, even it is uh, in, in their own admission, the athletes mentioned that, yes, I use this substance, and in, in, in terms of trying to find out the background, some of them um, you know, swear and have it and say, yes, I used it, but I was assisted by so-and-so. Um, I caught this drug from this pharmacy or I caught this drug from this uh, uh, medical practitioner who knew that this is an athlete and he was giving him deliberately uh, so that he could use it for enhancing his uh, performance. So we put all that information together. We do the follow-ups uh, through the investigations uh, department, intelligence and investigation department. We, we put it together, then pass it on now to the office of the director of public prosecution uh, for onward, you know, action. And, and as I said, there are several cases going on here. We don't want to have a situation where we are only dealing with athletes, because we know some of these uh, actions are supported by other unscrupulous people outside there. And, and if we are going to clean up our sports, we would rather clean up the entire spectrum. Because we can sanction the athlete today. That drug doctor, clinical officer, nurse or somebody out there will still be there tomorrow to uh, lure somebody else and, and do the same thing. So we would want to clean up uh, the entire spectrum so that uh, those who are sanctioned according to the court, let them face the sanction for using a prohibited substance. Those who have um, either colluded, those who have administered, those who have battled the drugs, those who have stopped it knowingly, you know, knowing that it will be used in that manner, let them also face uh, the consequences of that section 42.2 of our act. Uh, thank you. As the athletes face these sanctions, uh, there's a very uh, good question from uh, Byron Juma to which perhaps Agnes can uh, respond to. Like what you're witnessing uh, with the COVID-19 situation, there's a lot of stig stig stigmatization of uh, people who are caught to be COVID-19 positive uh, with the coronavirus. The athletes who are being sanctioned, they are out of competition. They are serving a four-year ban, eight-year ban, two months, whatever period. Do you have uh, you know, some uh, support system where you can uh, take them through this ban and rehabilitate them, so to speak, or they're just banned and uh, banished and forgotten about? Uh, thank you, Elias. That's a good question. And I know it's a concern for many Kenyans. Uh, that's something we've not yet started. 
we've not uh, created the rehab centers or something like that, but maybe looking forward into the future. That's something maybe the agency through the CEO should uh, look into, but uh, you know that will require, may require a lot of uh, funding because uh, that will mean you have counselors or psychologists, you employ them so that they can take care of uh, those uh, others that have been sanctioned. But uh, at the moment, uh, the only bit we can do with them is we try to encourage them, especially to come to our, our workshops so that they can continue listening to us and to feeling like they're part of us because they are never stopped from uh, having uh, uh, the, the listening to the, the education part of it. Uh, we would like to use such uh, athletes for as, as ambassadors so that they can talk to others and tell them why they should not uh, be doping uh, and how, how much they are suffering because of their mistakes and all that. But uh, in Kenya, it has been very difficult to bring these uh, athletes to us, to bring, you know, they have already, they stigmatize themselves. They feel like uh, they, are, they are actually not uh, wanted by the society, which is not true. We try to get to them, but uh, it's very hard to reach such athletes. And uh, uh, they, it, it, we, it would work well if they could come and work with us. And then we, we are able to go together with them, reaching out to others who are still clean so that they can be an ambassador and telling them why they should not do. But for, for counseling, we've not yet uh, started uh, the, the, the structured centers or something that is in the structure and form, but uh, maybe that's something we should look at from the agency's uh, point of view. We may look at that through the CEO and uh, see whether we can start something because it's important. And maybe, about, um, sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. Sorry, if you would allow me. Um, yeah. On them, I agree with Madam Magnus that uh, yes, we have not started the uh, right rehabilitation program, uh, mainly because we were dealing with the urgent issues at the beginning. You know, we, we had to you know, uh, stamp our foot on the ground, uh, get our programs rolling. Um, rehabilitation, yes, will come in at some point, but I would want to perhaps at this point appeal to the federations. The national federations uh, should perhaps consider this as part of their duty to their members, because the members belong to the federation they understand them better than us who have done the prosecution, who have done the you know, sample collection, done the test, and maybe done the prosecution before that it was dismissed the tribunal. And, and rehabilitation is important, but at that point, we might not uh, be properly, um, uh, adequately prepared as an agency to, to go the whole way from sample collection up to prosecution, up to the sanctioning level, and then the rehabilitation level. However, the federations can still come in at this point to ensure that they have a program for their officers, I mean, their members, uh, so that uh, they can fit in back into society uh, very well. We've seen very good, and uh, that is what Agnes said, I want to support that. that uh, we've seen situations where um, those who have accepted to talk to fellow athletes, somebody who, like uh, our sister here, Milka, who, who comes out to talk to her colleagues, Sometimes that, that language is uh, well received by fellow athletes. And we feel that at the federation level, using the older uh, generation athletes, uh, those who have uh, uh, performed well, and those who have a good reputation, and those who have uh, uh, gone through a rehabilitation process, then again, the impact would be much, much better. Because uh, the younger athletes will now you know, uh, listen to the practitioners, the people who have uh, been out there in the field struggling with them, those who have gone through the pain of losing, um, uh, you know, the fame of uh, their earlier years because of a mistake which was done at some point. So I think this is something which we can look at uh, together with the international federations, and I'm sure the Department of Sports uh, can come in strongly on this one uh, to assist. That's a very important point, uh, CEO. Milka, you've had that. Um, Part of the responsibility actually is with the athletes themselves. Uh, a couple of weeks back, there was a very strong proposal by two-time Boston Marathon champion Moses Tanui 
who was saying that uh, athletes need to lock themselves up in a room, discuss and make confessions, something like what we saw in South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, where people make confessions, they are forgiven, and then um, you start on a clean uh, note. What do you think about this? I think athletes, uh, yourselves and uh, fellow athletes, need to sort out this between yourselves before ADAC even comes in or Athletics Kenya. Okay, Elias, I think um, as athletes ourselves, we need to and uh, we need to believe in saying the truth. But uh, in Kenya, most of our athletes they can't tell you. You can even convince them the whole day, but most of them they can't tell you uh, what what they took or who gave them all those things. So I think uh, as athletes, we should learn to believe in ourselves and always say the truth and the truth will set us free. Uh, I know even the CEO himself, they have been passing a lot of difficulties dealing with our athletes. Our athletes for sure, especially the Kenyan athletes, we don't believe in saying the truth. So I think that's the only way that uh, when we say the truth, it will help us and uh, we'll move on well. Maybe if they don't want to talk, you can use your other heart yourself, somebody like Richard Matelo, members of the Kenya Police Service, get them and uh, before Ada comes in. Perhaps people in the disciplined forces can help. It is the, the rules and the regulations that we have as a country. Don't criminalize uh, these dopers. That's why they, they work freely. Mutuana like Amewin Olympics. So you can find that athlete telling you, after all, I'm, I'm, I'm eating and I have everything. So it's like, we should have a policy that it should criminalize these people so that any you were hard, let it be tough. Uh, thank you, Milka. Um, Ronex, you've heard that. Do you want to see these people in jail? Or like with jail, then maybe when they come out, the other people will be scared of uh, using these substances. What punishment do you think? You can imagine yourself in Tokyo. You are winning the 10,000 meters. Then somebody wins who has been using EPO, who has been using uh, some other steroids. And then you get your silver instead of gold. Would you want to see this person in jail? Microphone, Iko Bado. Can switch on your microphone. Ronex, we can't hear you. Yeah. When it okay, go comes on. to the... When it comes to that, Mr. Makore, I don't, I don't think it is good to behave like that. But to my concern, I, I am marching them just to run clean and win clean. But I think as athletes, you need to be more forceful. You need to do something. For example, where you train in Italy, uh, about two months ago, there's a, a, a Norwegian journalist who claims he found a syringe up at uh, Camarine Stadium, then claiming that Kenyan athletes dope in return. I think you need to be very strict on these people as fellow athletes. Uh, what do you want to tell them? Yeah, when it comes to, us, to, 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 to those people who text for all, all those photographs and videos there, as athletes, we, we, we must be careful when dealing with those people, you need to be, keep distance on them and not being social with them because they may write a false articles or a, a false story concerning athletes and maybe that those, those things they found, it, it was not concerned to athletes. But, you, but do you believe that uh, Italy is clean, there no, there's nobody doping, all the athletes are clean? When it comes to that, to that, Mr. Makore, I can't answer you there because <laughs> I cannot tell you 
this athlete is clean and this, uh, this athlete is not clean. I may tell you now, I may tell to, uh, what I'm going to tell you is that me personally, I may tell you I am a clean athlete because I know my body and I, I know myself and I know what I normally take. Yeah, thank you. Keep it, keep it that way. Yes, uh, Milka. To tell you the truth, there is no athlete, an elite athlete who will ever manyata kubali kudungwa na yachu hapo. Those are just quacks. Those are those people who pretend to be athletes, but they're not athletes. Those are the people who need some money for them to survive. So I don't think if there is an athlete who can go to that extent, that's a, a big lie. Yeah, you've heard that, uh, Mr. Kioni, your Olympic athletes uh, are under scrutiny. Like I said, every Olympic cycle, all these stories come up in the Western media about alleged doping. And I'm sure Tokyo will be another target. Now they have backed down a bit because uh, the games have been postponed. What are your thoughts about uh, policing, you know, all the athletes who are preparing for major competitions and to make sure that uh, these so-called people who are fabricating stories are also weeded out and uh, exposed? Uh, thank you again, Alas uh, Makori. Uh, I am very impressed with the statements from uh, Mirka Chamoz and Ronex, they are being honest, they are being candid. It's not very easy to police uh, our own athletes, but we must continue encouraging them to play clean, to remain clean, to avoid doping. Because as Agnes Mando explained, in the wrong run, if you are caught, eventually you'll be the biggest loser. And this is why you are also a bit excited when we hear that uh, the Minister of Sports is contemplating uh, uh, asking Parliament to, to criminalize uh, doping. Doping remains a big threat to our uh, sporting uh, reputation as a country. It, it remains a big threat to the image of our own sportsmen and sportswomen and to our image uh, as a country. So all means must be uh, 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 looked into to ensure that uh, we discourage our athletes. Because we have naturally talented athletes in this country, people who have been winning, winning uh, global awards without doping. It must be dealt with uh, ruthlessly. Thank you indeed. I mean, we should stop at nothing to make sure these people are in jail, committee, or wherever they belong. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, another question, Mr. Rugut and Agnes, perhaps you can weigh in on this. Uh, should we consider the current generation gone and start focusing on the kids right from kindergarten, perhaps introducing curriculum, uh, you know, education in the primary school, kindergarten, about doping as much as they study history, geography, uh, you know, teach them about the morals? Yeah, let me, let me come in there, uh, Elias. I, uh, Madam Mandu will also uh, chip in. We believe that uh, clean sports, as much as it is a current situation, a current issue for now, a topical issue which will never leave uh, our discussions uh, for a long time, we also are looking at the future. We are looking at the young people. We are looking at culture change. We are looking at the situation where somebody... Um, before motivation, you know, because by the time somebody becomes an elite athlete, somebody reaches national levels in competition, the motivation is sometimes different by that time. Uh, as uh, Mr. Kioni has uh, correctly said, somebody starts looking at it in terms of Nipate Pesa Nichenge Nyumba. I have a neighbor who, for example, may have uh, participated somewhere, got some uh, little money and uh, cross the poverty line as a result of that. So these are motivations which we, we know sometimes our athletes fall into. Peer pressure, people may influence one another in terms of their thought systems. But if we manage to develop a group from fairly early um, to think and uh, conclude that this is right, this is wrong, then by the time these other motivations come in, then it will be very easy for that person to uh, even up front refuse and say, no, you, you want to introduce me to something which I know is wrong. 
So it's a whole system of uh, cultural development, change in terms of uh, perception, change in terms of uh, thought process, change in terms of value. What do you value as an individual? Uh, and so the, the, the future uh, is in the young generation. However, since we are already in the middle of a problem, as we clean up the current generation, um, I think it is good to invest in more education, uh, change of, we are working already, and I think uh, uh, Madam Mandu will elaborate on that. We are working uh, with the Kenya Institute of uh, Curriculum Development, trying to see, we've done piloting in a number of counties, to see how this can be introduced uh, in terms of uh, early learning, um, so that uh, children in primary school uh, start uh, being introduced to the value system maybe even beyond just uh, the issue of uh, sports and uh, substance abuse, but, but the general outlook in life so that somebody starts thinking positively about how he relates. If you are going to compete in a field, are you going to compete cheating the others? Or are you going to compete um, knowing that all the others are equal to yourself, except that maybe you trained better or you are more talented, that you have better endurance because of uh, maybe good um, diet and so on. So th these are, it, it's a whole process. It's not too late to start it now. And I believe the future is uh, bright if we change uh, from that perspective. But perhaps uh, Madam Mandu can weigh in on the same. Okay, thank you, uh, Bonasio. Yes, just to add uh, on to what Tawasio said. Elias, uh, you are right about uh, introducing some uh, uh, curricula or education for the young generation. And uh, as uh, Sua said, we are working with the KICD, developing a curricula, and we are hoping that at one point, for sure the education on the fight against doping sports or values-based education, because that's uh, education that is uh, building integrity on children as they are growing up. We are hoping for sure that uh, KACD will, will, will fast track this and uh, pick it as uh, one of the very important uh, topics to be included in the, in the school curricula. Uh, so far, we've uh, worked on uh, designs uh, for the pre-primary and uh, we, were, we had started on the senior part of it, uh, but at one point, uh, other things to, uh, took over. But um, I can't say that we do away with the, with the senior, with the, 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 the elite who are already there because uh, maybe of a few who are painting the, the image of those who are, who are clean. Because uh, earlier, to be frank, it doesn't mean that uh, though we have some uh, athletes who are sanctioned in Kenya, that all, the, the whole lot is uh, rotten. No, we have uh, uh, some who are very clean and therefore we cannot uh, uh, just do away with them and forget about them, but uh, we will continue encouraging them so that they can uh, also be uh, an example to those who are coming up that so-and-so competed clean and he won clean, and therefore I can also follow in those steps and uh, win clean. So uh, I would say we will continue with the, the old ones as we are bringing up uh, the younger generations to fill in the gaps. But uh, we are hoping that the younger ones now will come up knowing exactly what they need to do in order to remain clean. So uh, uh, we work together with the old ones and the, the, the young ones. And we are encouraging the, the older ones because the, pro, the main problem will be, the, of course, the old ones, the elite ones. The young ones have no problem because they will get the, the, the values that you are, you, are, you are giving to them. When they are growing up, they, are, they, they catch up those values very fast and they are able to emulate them. But they, the, the elite ones, the, the national levels, the lower levels, we need to continue talking to them because among them, they still we still have those who are uh, who are dropped by others without knowing, innocently, because uh, maybe an agent or a coach or whoever or a manager they want to to get their their percentage uh, of the money that they win without these athletes knowing what they are doing to them. 
So we will continue talking to them and telling them, don't allow somebody to, to, to treat you, don't allow anything, uh, to take anything or injections that you don't know what they are for, so that uh, they can also uh, remain clean and be a good example to our, our upcoming one. So we, let's work with all yeah. of them together. Thank you. Well, thank you, Agnes. Um, I think we'll be just taking, uh, we'll be winding up and uh, taking final comments. We'll begin with you, Agnes. Uh, yeah, you've mentioned about the old people. They say that uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And uh, we've seen these people, they are on the Adams uh, Anti-Doping Administration and Management System, these, the athletes on the pool. They're educated every other day, but simply you find a lot of cases coming up. It means that some of them could be doing it knowingly. Um, what would be your closing remarks, especially perhaps you could touch on um, the way about rule, which uh, you know is becoming prevalent, uh, people flouting the whereabouts and also the athlete's biological passport. Perhaps you can touch on those two issues and uh, also Mr. Rugut, uh, the two of you. Uh, Adams, uh, the, the pool, and also the whereabouts and the uh, ABP, athlete's biological passport. Uh, thank you, Elias. Uh, this one, uh, I will just uh, talk uh, briefly because the CEO, I'm sure you will be able to elaborate on it. Uh, whereabouts, we keep on talking to the athletes that are in the registered testing pool because those are the athletes that are affected by the whereabouts. Uh, I want to take this opportunity and thank uh, AK, Athletics Kenya, because uh, despite us having our whereabouts or registered testing pool with Adams, they have also created their own, which uh, may not uh, be recognized by by WADA or AIU, but it is really helping in uh, making the athletes know what is expected of them. So wh whereabouts, the, an athlete who has already been put into whereabouts or registered testing pool, uh, the, what I would uh, request them is that um, if they are not able to file their whereabouts, because sometimes it's complicated uh, and they have to do it through Adams. Uh, one, they can, call for help. Uh, they are allowed to use their coaches, their managers, their agents to update their whereabouts for them. They don't have to do it just, uh, I mean, to, to, to have a fighting failure just because they are not able to do it. Uh, well, uh, in the office, they can still call uh, some of us uh, and we will be able to assist them to update their whereabouts. But once they have updated their whereabouts, it's very important for them to be in the position they have declared to be in the one hour slot. That one hour slot is the only problem that uh, will affect a, a, an athlete who is in a registered testing board. Because when a, a doping control officer comes for testing and stays in that station, because they'll come stay in where you said you'll be, whether you are training or you are at home, they will come there for that one hour slot that you have declared. And they will stay there for the whole hour. Then they will call you after the one hour and tell you we, were, we had come to, to test you, but you are not available. And they will register that as, as a missed test. I don't think there is, a, there, there is any good reason for an athlete to register a missed test. You are the person who chose that hour, you knew that uh, you can be available in that hour. And you're also allowed to change that hour. If you feel it's not uh, available, I mean, it's not very conducive for you, you can change that one hour and uh, put it in an hour which you think now you're more available, but do it in a good uh, time so that uh, you are not missed. So uh, uh, for athletes uh, in the registered testing pool, I want to encourage them. In case they don't have the information, especially at this time of COVID-19, we have uh, our materials on the, in our web, website. We have our, our e-learning. Uh, e we have a portal, online portal, which uh, we are hoping to launch very soon. But at the moment, it's still working. And they can log in. They can uh, check on the module. The, there are several modules. There are about, about four modules. Uh, the athletes have three modules, and in the first module, first module has a, a topic on whereabouts. They can read that topic as many times as possible, 
and uh, go to the questions because they are questions which they are they will do after the after ED. And if they feel they, there's an option for them to go back again, read again, and uh, do the questions again. And I believe from there, they will understand exactly what is expected of them. And there are, there, there, there are support personnel can assist them, they can read together, they can explain to them what is expected for them. Because there is no good reason for an athlete to have a sanction because of where That would be care me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. As you as you wind up, uh, also perhaps you could touch on very briefly from a very layman's point of view, uh, the Ministry of Health, the testing you know on COVID nineteen coronavirus is very aggressive and uh, you know vibrant. What learnings can ADAC uh, you know take from this? Because some people are asking, uh, why can the Ministry of Health be as forceful in supporting? Uh, the fight against doping since these testing protocols can be accelerated. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, I'll start with uh, just amplifying what uh, Madam Mandu has uh, said about uh, whereabouts and about the RTP. Um, I want to clarify that I think for now, the, our athletes in the RTP, in the registered testing pool, whom, as we have correctly said, are given a lot of education. We take them through a specific education about uh, how to file you know, their, their whereabouts. Um, they are starting to pick up. The challenges are still there, as Madam Andrew has said. Uh, but we encourage them. And, and here again is where I think the Federation can also still come in, uh, come in to help uh, some of these athletes. We know uh, some of our athletes come from fairly rural background, but they have reached the national level in terms of uh, performance. Um, and some of them, we have now picked them to be in our RCP because of, uh, they have become persons of interest. Uh, and, and small mistakes, which as uh, we can say are inexcusable. You know, filing your whereabouts, where are you training today? Are you traveling from Eldoret to Kapsabet? Are you traveling from Kapsabet to Nairobi? so that you, we can have that window in the event that we need to test you, where do we get you? It's as simple as that. But sometimes we find that there are gaps and those gaps are what are bringing the sanctions. Um, sometimes also some of the athletes in the RTP give uh, proxies to file this for them. Good enough, we can assist. Sometimes uh, other people can assist you, the managers, the trainers. But let it be also your responsibility as an athlete to follow up and find out whether um, these details have been given because at the end of the day, you are the person who will be, uh, who will be sanctioned. Um, a bit about the APP before I finalize uh, Panamakori. APP is one of the technical, technological um, innovations of uh, the recent past um, where we don't rely on a one-off sample collection, and this is mainly for blood, uh, to test whether somebody is positive or not positive. But over a period of time, a number of samples are studied um, again in, in uh, those very specific uh, conditions which are follow or which adhere to standards to ensure that now we, we see is uh, even if there is no positive, nothing which has been uh, found directly, is there an abnormal uh, tendency in the profile of this uh, particular athlete? And, and so again, this is a cautionary statement to the athletes that uh, even if the, the sample does not yield a positive at that particular instance, but over a period of time, five, six, seven samples looked at uh, together against you know certain specifications, then it can yield you know a suspicious uh, sample. These are where we find we are, we, we are able to follow up with a retest. We are able to follow up with a target test. Uh, and sometimes even a, a full sanction is given on the basis uh, of that. So th these are all technological uh, development science is uh, catching up again uh, with uh, us in a situation where in the past it might have been uh, easy to do something and get away with it. Um, so as we prepare for the next major competitions, it's good to have uh, this in mind. Let the athletes be aware that uh, um, the science is, is, is there, is tracking them. Um, the messages that we'll continue giving them is that uh, play clean and, and you know, win right. 
Otherwise, uh, it would be embarrassing as we prepare for, for a major event to find that we are creating gaps which can come to embarrass uh, the particular athlete and also which can uh, be, you know, in terms of uh, the reputation of the country, uh, bring us down. Yeah, perhaps quickly, you could touch on um, how you can tap into the testing muscle that the Ministry of Health is employing on COVID uh, to help uh, the fight against doping. Yes, we want to thank uh, the, the efforts that have been put up uh, by the Ministry of Health. I think uh, this is a multi-sectoral uh, kind of uh, initiative. Uh, the response uh, timings also are very, you know, very quick. And, and learning from this, we have written to the ministry because I think we cannot, uh, at the agency level, uh, be able now to um, rob in the other uh, departments or other agencies of government. Uh, to assist us in this, but we've, we've asked the minister, uh, the cabinet secretary in charge of sports, um, to perhaps through our office now get uh, the other team players, the other sectors, the other cabinet secretaries uh, in charge of interior, in charge of uh, health, uh, all those who can uh, lend a hand, so so that the you know the method which has been applied in terms of uh, responding to. COVID-19 can be uh, used to respond to uh, doping issues. We, we, we are hopeful that uh, this can give us a breakthrough and we are waiting for a response uh, to that effect. Thank you uh, for those great remarks. Uh, as we wind up, uh, your final remarks, Mr. Kiyodi, there's a, the misconception that uh, doping is only prevalent in track and field. As the president of the Kenya Volleyball Federation, wearing your other hat. Um, as you close, what comment do you have to other disciplines? Because you've seen weightlifting again is uh, being mentioned at Basley. Uh, do volleyballers do? Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. McCordy. Doping cuts across all the sports. In volleyball, we have had uh, one or two incidents uh, picked up by ADAC and taken to the sports uh, disputes tribunal. So doping affects uh, all our athletes and it's therefore important that uh, all the federations, the leadership of other federations continuously uh, create awareness amongst the athletes uh, so that the athletes get to know, both sportsmen and sportswomen get to know the dangers. You know, the, the, the benefits of doping are short-lived, but the dangers of uh, doping could uh, haunt you for life. Already, I, I understand that in the last four months, we have had uh, seven athletes suspended, which uh, is quite worrisome. I just want to reiterate that the National Olympic Committee of Kenya will be vigilant. We will continue working very, very closely with ADAC. We will continue working very closely with the uh, heads of the various federations. And I think I take this opportunity to also thank uh, Third General Tway, President of AK, for his uh, recent remarks in terms of their commitment uh, mm -hmm. to deal with those who attempt to do doping. ADAC must continuously educate and create awareness to our sportsmen and sportswomen so that doping becomes a thing of the past. You know, if doping was something like COVID-19, uh, threatening the lives of uh, literally everybody, the Ministry of Health would have dealt with doping. It would be a thing of the past. But unfortunately, uh, doping is self-inflicted. It is selective. You, you choose what you want to do. And it's, it's actually cheating because you dope so that you can win against athletes who are using their natural talents. And at the end of the day, you don a medal around your neck knowing in your own mind that you are stealing. So you, it must be encouraged fully. And uh, as I said earlier on, the National Olympic Committee of Kenya will continue working closely with ADAC, with uh, AK and other, other federations to ensure that uh, going to Tokyo 2021 do not have incidents of doping amongst our Kenyan contingent. Thank you, Mr. Kiyuni, and wish you well as you continue um, engineering the Kenyan drive towards the Tokyo Olympics. Um, Milka, you've heard it from uh, 
Chef Dimission, you have heard from Mr. Rugut, from Agnes. What will be your closing remarks? Maybe this DOPA should be quarantined in committee for 14 years. <laughs> okay, Elias, I think uh, the only advice an athlete can get it from me as to their athlete rep is uh, please run clean and win clean. That's the only song that I can sing to them. Thank you very much. Very powerful uh, message indeed, Milka. Thanks a lot. Uh, Ronex, you are the last one to wind up. We're almost doing, a, if it was Eliud Kipchoge, you will be approaching the finish line. We're almost at the two hour mark. Uh, what is your, your final advice to the athletes? And um, thank you for your time. I'm sure you, you are supposed to be going for training. What are your final remarks before we wind up? My final remarks to my fellow athletes is that be, be genuine on what you, 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 you on your training, train well, eat well, uh, but eat well, but eat what you, what is good for your health, update your whereabouts, train well, do whatever is what is needed, read what uh, other are telling us what they are telling us, follow what the athletes can are telling us, follow what your coaches are telling us, and all shall be well. And uh, before I let you go, Ronex, uh, people yes. are wondering, you've broken the 5K on the road, 10K on the road. Since 1968, Kenya has never won an Olympic gold medal on the track in the 10,000 meters. Going uh, towards Beijing, I mean, uh, uh, Tokyo, are you going to focus on the track, get that gold medal, and then go back to the road and perhaps graduate to the half marathon and full marathon? Yeah, mainly when it comes to, 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 to the Olympics, the main important thing was the Olympics. But due to this COVID-19, the, the Olympics was postponed next year. But we are praying God so hard to keep us held until next year so that we can work hard and work for, for that medal. So we hope to get it back from 1968 from, from you in Tokyo. Yeah, first we are praying good to, to lead us until next year so that we can be able to run well as it reaches next year. Thank you, Ronex. We wish you well as you go into your training. Thanks for your time. Uh, you know, two hours for an athlete is very long and you've sacrificed, but it's a very important topic. And I hope that uh, the other athletes listening will follow your example and listen to what you have said uh, and what uh, athletes rep Milka has said. And indeed the CEO of uh, ADAC, uh, Mr. Rugut, thank you very much for your time. We know you had other commitments and you, you decided to extend and it's been very, very valuable. There are a lot of people watching a lot of questions which we will share with you. Uh, you know, people watching from, I can see Emmanuel B. Watt in, in Holland, there's uh, Timir Mir uh, in the uh, USA and also uh, there's Alfred Rotich watching from Perth, Australia. That shows you how much interest is in this topic. So thank you very much, uh, Bona CEO. Agnes, uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Keep on teaching those people about their whereabouts. I mean, uh, they can't run away. Of course, they can run faster than you, but you need to tell them that uh, it's for their own good. And yeah. looking forward to that uh, translation of uh, the doping uh, information into QC so that my villagers can also, <laughs> <laughs> and also Ronex. Uh, uh, Ronex, so what do you call uh, anti-doping in Kalenjin? Anti-doping You see, Ronex wants to learn. He wants to, <laughs> and the other people will be interested. So over to you, CEO Agnes, uh, get those translations moving. Uh, Mr. Kioni, as you say in Japan, Arigato gozaimasu, and to all the viewers who are watching, thank you and uh, uh, oh, looking finish, forward to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I before I finish. Me? Yes, okay. finish, huh? uh, I think uh, for me, my God, for me it's a good uh, opportunity to talk to know because uh, we've been having issues uh, to reach out to some federation and not being the umbrella body and we were with the representative of a very high level mr keoni there uh, i'm just appealing if they could talk to some of these uh, federations uh, that uh, run away from us 
We've uh, tried very hard to get to basketballers and uh, we've not been able to. We would like very much to talk to rugby as many times as possible, but it's been very difficult. We want to thank God for the Kenya Premier League, who uh, they gave us an opportunity to talk to footballers some time back, but we would like to talk to them again. So after this COVID-19, uh, I would request NOC to get to, because they have a commitment to work with us, uh, for hand, Mr. Kion say so. Can, he, or can they also assist us uh, get to these federations and give them education, which is becoming the priority even to wonder that education should come first before testing. So can we please uh, reach out to our, our athletes of whatever level, uh, all the sportsmen and women, the sports personnel, we talk to them and give them the information so that we don't have this in advertent uh, doping. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. Uh, Mr. Kioni has heard you very well, reaching out to the other disciplines, including that's where people think when you take two beers, you can focus properly and get away from uh, doping. So even darts, even shooting, even Ajua, I believe uh, Ajua people dope uh, sometimes. The bangi people smoke, the mirror. These are things that are on the water list. Mr. Kioni, you've heard that. Thank you. I've heard uh, that request from Agnes. We were not aware that we're having those challenges. I want to assure ADAC CEO, I want to assure Agnes that NOC will work with them to ensure that those who are not available become available. Thank you very much for the assurance. And it's a very good uh, reassuring note to end uh, our webinar today. So those people playing a jua in the village and you are chewing Mira, you know, ADAC will come and fish you out. Even those people playing darts, uh, we used to call it Matumbo Darts Club. I don't know what, whether it's still existing today. So uh, be on the lookout. The best thing is to just uh, run clean and win clean and keep the name of the nation. A very beautiful country, Kenya, high up there for the right reasons, for the gold medals, but not for the positive uh, cases. So thank you. And on behalf of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya, looking forward to uh, joining you in the next uh, webinar forum like this next Thursday. Remember, it's every Thursday. Stay safe, sanitize, keep social distance, uh, wear your masks. Uh, I think uh, because of the conversation we could not wear, but uh, I'll just put on mine as I wind up and say, thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah.